Hello and welcome to this new video in the SQL playlist. From this video onwards, we will start learning the advanced concepts in SQL. From this video, we will learn creating and managing views. Let's get started. Let us first understand what is a view, in what situations would you use it, and what are the benefits of it. The first thing is, we have seen how to create tables and we have been using them throughout this playlist. And that's how mostly you would interact in SQL with the tables. So the tables are physical objects. Views are virtual objects. That's the main difference that you have to understand. The tables actually are physically present at some location on either your system or any on the remote server. But the view doesn't occupy any space as such, just like the tables, because it is just a layer on top of the tables. So if that's the case, we have to understand why views are used. There are many reasons and benefits of it. One of the common reasons what you would see is if you don't want to expose the underlying tables to the end users, that's where you create a view on top of tables and give it to the user to consume it. That is one of the things. By virtue of this, your underlying tables are secured and those are not exposed to the end user. So let's see how we can do this. Another uh, reason also before we see how to create views is, is that let's say the tables are loaded through an ETL job or any other process wherein the data is fed either manually or through automated way. And then after the data is fed, you want some calculations to be done on top of your data. That's where, you know, Creating views also is helpful so that you can write your own business logic or custom logic into it and then consume that view. So let us see how to do this all together. First, I'll start with a simple example. So we start with create view, just like the way we did create table. Here we'll say create view. And after that, we'll choose any view name. And the view name should be unique. So for example, let me just write a simple one. I'll say create view, select data. This is the view name, remember, this needs to be unique as under the definition of the view. So for example, just to start, I'll say select star from the product or any table for right now. Now that's your choice what you want to do in the select. So you can include almost all the scenarios that we have seen in this playlist or anything that you could think of almost in the select. If you want specific columns, you have to refine them. But right now, I'll just want to create this. Before I create this, I will minimize these tables and I'll show you where the views are located in the object explorer. You will find them under, just below the table, there is a views folder, expand this. In here, you will have the views. Now I did create some of the views, that's why I'll see more views over here. On your system, if you have never created views, there would be just like a couple of them which are already available. So now I'm going to create this view. Understand when you create the view, you will not get the output of this statement. It has created this view as an object. You'll have to refresh it over here. And you will see this select data here. Right? In order to fetch data from this, you will just use a select query against the view, just like the way you used to query a normal table. And I'll select this. There you go. So this view becomes a layer on top of your table. And remember, it's a virtual table. This doesn't occupy any space just like what your table does. Okay. So that is just one to start. And in the same way, you could keep on doing more. Let me give you more example to this. For example, I just copy this and I wanted to join two tables together. Let's say dim product and the sales and then do some operation on top of it. So for example, we wanted to know product by sales. So here I'll say view name. You can choose any view name as long as it's unique, that's fine. I'll say product by sales as, and then I'll write my business logic. So I'll join two tables over here. I'll say select from dim product. Let's name this as P, inner join, fact sales, fact internet sales F on P dot product key, this is the joint condition, is equal to f dot product key. And from in this tables, I want p dot English product name and f dot sales amount. Before you even create view, it's always 
advisable that you run the select statement first to confirm whether or not it is working fine. This is fine. Now I want to aggregate this. So I'll say sum of sales amount and call this as total sales. We'll split this into multiple lines. And then finally, we'll have to do group by P dot English product name. Again, I'll select the select statement, execute, and I see that's fine. Perfect. And then we'll create this view. Refresh. Here you have it. Product Y sales. And you can directly also fire right click, select top 1000 or write your query. So think of it this way that now, you know, someone wanted this kind of view. So you just, you know, uh, one who is not, who, is, who doesn't use SQL, for example, and one who's working on the reporting or BI side, he wants to consume this as an Excel, Tableau or Power BI. So you can just create this view for him or that person and just ask him to connect to the database by the credentials and give him this particular view name. So he will think, okay, this is some table. It doesn't matter to him. He just wants this data. So this is a feature or the benefit of creating the view. Very simple. Another thing is, let me click on this. In order to delete the view, you will say drop view, view name, just like drop table. So now if I refresh from here, so you see that view has gone. In case, <clears throat> let's say you created this view again and you wanted to change the definition of this view. Change the definition means nothing but you wanted to make some amendments in the query of the view. So what you can do is just say alter view and then write your statement. So for example, I just wanted product key, English product name and this price. So I'll make sure my select statement is fine and then I'll alter the view. So now if I query this view, I'll not see all the columns. I'll only see those columns, those three columns, but not all the columns, columns, sorry. So that's another thing. So these are just some examples to get started with, but keep in mind that, you know, uh, as if now, what you got to know is firstly, why we create views since it adds that security layer and it doesn't expose the underlying tables from where you're getting the data. By looking at this output, the user will never come to know from where your data is coming in. So that's an added layer. And also it's just a virtual table, but not a physical one. One more thing you should also remember is the way we used to insert the data into a table by using insert into statement, the same way you can insert the data in a view. But at the end of the day, it will go in the underlying table. However, you can only do such thing when you have a single table in your view. If you have multiple tables, you will not be able to insert through the insert statement. So you can just say insert into this view name and just the same thing. It will work fine for this view, but for this view, it will not work because the underlying tables are more than one. So keep that in mind. And eventually it will go into the inner table, which is dim product or whichever table you have written. So those are some benefits. When we move further, we'll also come back and compare how views are different to other objects that we will learn going forward in the advanced SQL. That's it in this video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.